All right, Bill, you're ready. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill McClure, uh, and I'm running for St. John's County Commission, District 3, representing District 3. Uh, my election is uh, the only one that's uh, not closed, so anybody can vote across the county. Um, and uh, I am the son of uh, Bill McClure, uh, who worked for Jimmy, President Jimmy Carter, um, a Democrat. Uh, and uh, grew up under that, uh, that household. Um, I then uh, went to uh, high school, grew up in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, I went to high school at Gainesville High. I uh, was student body president of my high school. I went to uh, University of Florida and University of South Florida, uh, where I was student body president of the university. Uh, I then went to work for Senator George Kirkpatrick, uh, who at that time was a Democrat. Uh, in Tallahassee. Uh, I was a uh, Senate page during a session and then I went on to be his aide uh, during the entire time. Uh, I also worked for uh, then Senator Bob Graham. <laughs> so we're, uh, you're getting this picture here. I grew up uh, as in Democrats, uh, but I've always been a Republican, um, uh, been a true conservative. Um, since I was able to vote, uh, and uh, uh, but I, but party affiliation doesn't, to me, doesn't, uh, uh, you know, voting shouldn't be bipartisan. So it should be about the candidate, and that's one of the reasons why I was an advocate in not having a closed election, um, uh, and I wanted it to be truly open to anybody uh, and any candidate. And any uh, uh, party. Uh, <clears throat> I have a palm card that I brought today uh, that will talk about my uh, my campaign platform. I'm a true conservative. Um, less government is more efficient um, and promote controlled growth. And well, um, our campaign is about think global and act local. And that's our campaign slogan. And what that means is, if you're concerned about, let's say, America's dependency upon oil, and you live in St. John's County, then you should be concerned about St. John's County dependency upon property taxes. Because 70% of that pays for our schools and our safety. So, we have a complete dependency upon that. And what that does is that fosters an environment in, uh, in, in equivalent to in business um, as having one product. And in business you can't survive in, in one product. Uh, I've been a business man uh, here since 2004. Uh, prior to that I've owned two successful businesses, uh, one of which I sold and, and took public and the second I sold to a venture capital uh, firm. Uh, both are still thriving today, uh, and I have a very, very, very well, uh, thriving practice here in, uh, in business here in uh, St. John's County. Uh, I am able to employ about, I employ about 100 people uh, nationwide. I'm, about 50 of those are here in St. John's County. So I'm familiar with the business environment in St. John's County. The second thing on my list is I'm pro-business. That takes me to pro-business. Government is a business. Let's run it that way, where every body and every division is accountable. In my business, my company, we have four different divisions. Each division must stand on its own. In government, it, it's the same way. We have revenues that come in. We have debt. Uh, and um, we... Uh, should act accountable for all of that debt. We should act accountable for all of that revenue. And um, again, the, the dependency, the single dependency upon property taxes m sometimes forces a business to react in certain ways. Uh, an analogy would be uh, if, as we've seen over the last few years, property taxes have, have actually gone up. Um, but nobody's really felt it in their, in their wallet because the valuations have gone down. 
what has ha what it will happen, and rates are still low, but as soon as rate, the economy turns around and the interest rates start to go up and property values start to creep, that same person who maybe wrote a $700 to $2,000 check is going to be writing a $1,400 or, or could be writing a $1,000 to $3,000 check. Uh, and that could hurt some folks. That could hurt some folks. And uh, the way that the message came to me for that particular property tax increase was, uh, you know, my kids weren't going to have lights at their school, um, and that's what I heard. And uh, and I started to look into it and said, well, you know, what, what does really the dependency upon our lights have to do with our property taxes? And then I took a look at the budget, and I went, wow, there's a single, you know, we have a single widget here, and the widget is going to go up and down based upon, like the stock market, based upon property values, based upon market values. That's trouble. That is trouble. Uh, I want to fix that. Good morning. How are you? Keep on. That's okay. That's okay. No problem. The, uh, I was talking about the dependency upon uh, property taxes, which is the St. Charles County single widget that we have. How do we fix that? We, we get, expand public utilities. We look right to our neighbors all around and we offer perhaps electric. We partner with new development or new communities or new commercial development to offer uh, voice and data for internet. All the things that we can do to bring that um, uh, uh, through. And underground utilities obviously living in a, in a hurricane state is uh, very important uh, to us. Uh, so one of the ways would be to expand the service offering and stop the dependency upon property tax by expanding the utilities um, uh, department. Um, and Peter, I'll just uh, back up a little bit. I'm uh, representing District 3 mm -hmm. for St. John's County Commissioner. I'm a conservative. I'm pro-business. Our message throughout this campaign is think global, act local. An analogy would be if you believe that we're dependent upon oil as a nation, St. John's County is dependent upon uh, property taxes. Another analogy might be if you're worried about America outsourcing jobs, well every time you look at who's working on a county building or a road way, you may see uh, side of the truck that says Miami, Florida, or says Duval uh, uh, County. Um, that's a big problem for us. I, one of the things that we would change that ties in with our pro-business keep it local uh, message is to ensure that when we go out for bid for the projects that we first preference is somebody here within St. John's County. All too often I see during the budget process or the RFP process in, in government and in, in politics that they look for the lowest bidder wins. What they don't realize is that it may not be the lowest bidder who is actually the lowest bidder. It may be the slightly higher one on the project but they're a local. You turn right back around and they pay their employees, they spend their money, they buy their milk, we get the sales tax revenue and the money should stay here. Another big problem that we have in St. John's County, coming, coming from Gainesville, let me tell you, the path from Gainesville, Latcher County, is directly through Palatka, right to Crescent Beach. So I've been coming to Crescent Beach since the 70s, uh, six, late 60s, early 70s. Uh, and I noticed the, the pattern, come in here, spend the money for a day, spend the day at the beach, and then go back. Then when I moved here full-time in 2004, I noticed the folks who worked here and lived here went north to the Town Center Mall or to, to Duval County to work uh, and uh, spend money uh, in, to our north. And so I, I noticed that there's a dif difference between inflow of money and outflow of money. And we need to do a better job of keeping that money here, uh, local. Keep it local. Again, part of the pro-business uh, campaign is to ensure that 
if we're able to if we're able to give the job uh, an RFP to whether it's a painter, a plumber, an electrician, doesn't matter. Give the job focus on local work, the local economy. How many people know that in China they really wanted Harley Davidson and they really wanted Kentucky Fried Chicken and Pizza Hut? The problem was that in China you're not allowed to own a business outside of China because you, you're not Chinese. So, but they said, you know what, we'll allow you to come in and do business with us if you'll pick a regional businessman or regional entrepreneur or whoever it is, the person that can afford it maybe, to come in and partner with that person on a 51-49% and you'll we'll participate, we'll allow you to come into our country and help participate and that ensures that their local economy does work. That model may work for those RFPs that are large that we don't have um, a large asphalt paving company here that can maybe ha handle that, but we, I bet you we have laborers, but I bet you we have folks who can help uh, uh, do the work here. So the partnering effect uh, will actually may actually work here in St. John's County. Uh, again, the, the biggest message is stop the dependency upon property taxes. True conservative, uh, fiscal accountability, uh, pro-local, think global, act uh, local. I've been a successful businessman. Uh, I own a business. I have uh, several employees, almost uh, about 100 employees nationwide, uh, three different offices here in Florida, about 55 employees. Um, okay, sir, can we start the question? Yes, sir. So what's your business? Uh, I own a Medi Companies. That's a uh, medical, MediMD is a, a medical practice, family practice, uh, and behavioral health. Uh, Medi IT is, is a uh, software, healthcare information technology, and a uh, third party administrator, which is a processor of claims. Uh, okay, you said uh, several times that there was a, um, a, a tax increase. What tax increase? The, uh, uh, the uh, millage increase. Okay. Uh, the, the other side would argue that yes, we, they did increase the millage, but the Taxes were going down. I mean, the property values are going down at a greater rate than the military was going up. So, in essence, it was a, still a tax cut, just not as great a once it had been. And they point out that in 2005, 2006, 2007, they lowered the millage rate when uh, revenues were going up. And your assumption is that when revenues start to uh, go again, is that they won't lower the millage rate. But historically, they have. So, uh, how do you respond to that, sir? Uh, there is no guarantee that they're going to reduce the milita military, mm -hmm. but there is a guarantee that if we don't expand our service offering, we're still subject to the property taxes that military. Uh, if we, the assumption is that if we lower the military, then we're perhaps lowering services to our citizens of St. John's County. Uh, whether or not that exactly happened or not. In this last time, the millage rate, I can tell you what did happen. The millage rate did increase and services did decrease. So that's what happened. We had, the rate went up, services to the citizens went down. What services went down? Uh, healthcare for one. Mm -hmm. St. John's County Mental Health was just one. Services were, de were decreased. So, uh, and that's one that I can, that I'm, I'm directly involved with. So, there is no guarantee that when revenues go up, the problem is that the dependency, they go up and they go down. You're asking me a question of, of your question revolves around military rate going up and military rate going down. If we have other service offerings, maybe that swing, that pendulum swing, wouldn't be so um, uh, either, uh, you know, wouldn't be so pointed to the citizens of of St. John's County if we were less dependent upon this. I assume from your comments that you would not have voted for the millage rate increase that had you been on the commission. Correct. Okay. Um, the question, the way uh, Michael Wanchek, the county administrator, phrased it, said, we can do anything you want with whatever revenue you give us. The question is, what kind of a county do you want? And they framed the issue in terms of a firehouse. Do you want that? Do you want the uh, 800 uh, uh, megahertz uh, 
emergency response system, and do you want uh, amenities? And they gave the example of lights in the parks. Um, so I'm going to ask you the question that he asked the, the, the community. What kind of a county do you want? He's basically saying we can cut taxes, but we have to cut services. Your question, again, centers around taxes and services. The county that I want... It, it, yeah, it, it, it's around the county you want. That's right. Question. But you mentioned taxes and services. Right. As long as we keep that sentence, those sentences together, mm -hmm. those words in the same sentence, we we have no choice. In a lot, a lot of cases, your, that single widget it, it, that revolves around taxes to be able to offer services, we've got to be able to offer different revenues. That's the type of county that I want is where we're less dependent upon taxes and the taxation. Okay, so what new revenue sources would you uh, uh, suggest? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, electric, voice and data. Uh, depending on the public utilities, uh, perhaps a telephone, uh, something like that. And those are just the few. Uh, the it's an interesting view you argue because just the opposite of what we're hearing from other candidates. The other candidate says go go more the private sector. Uh, you're saying have the public sector take over uh, things that the private sector is now doing. Is that, was that am I hearing you that's, correctly? That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Infrastructure. Those things I consider infrastructure. I consider infrastructure part of what government should help provide as a service. Those things that I mentioned, I consider those as infrastructure. For example, when we allow a builder to permit and mm -hmm. build homes, well, we have our utilities running there already. Mm -hmm. So, and then we don't do anything about it, and here comes Comcast Cable or private industry, Bell South, AT and T, whoever it is. Uh, you know, we have a few uh, mm -hmm. private entities out there, Lightstream Cable, who picked up on that. Um, and they said, hey, if I could have a right of way to run my fiber optic line or whatever, I can make the revenues. Well, that's part of infrastructure. That's part of under, underground utilities. That's part of in infrastructure that I consider that the county can take part of. So rather than considering it as a, um, you know, deprivatizing, I would rather consider it as government using uh, capitalizing, capitalism. Okay. Every single candidate in every single county commission race has identified himself or herself as a conservative. Now there's a new word coming up. That's, I'm a true conservative. You say identify yourself as a true conservative. What's the difference? Between a conservative and a true conservative? Yes. Uh, I believe that the difference is in your actions. When you say that you're accountable, you're going to hold your department uh, accountable for the income and the expenses, or the assets and the debt, then uh, that's a true conservative. If you're not, and you're, it doesn't matter what you call yourself, whether you're conservative or not, if you're subject to market conditions of your only widget that you're putting out there, then you really have no choice but to potentially be a conservative on the great during the great economy and, uh, and not be a conservative during a down economy. Okay, so you're saying that some of the people who say the conservatives are running uh, are not really conservatives in uh, the Bill M M McClure definition? I can't comment on any other candidate uh, that's, that is running, I, and nor would I uh, perhaps uh, you know, question their, their... Okay, do you align yourself with the Tea Party? you consider yourself a Tea Party uh, candidate? Uh, I believe that some of the views, less government or more efficient government, is a Tea Party view. Mm -hmm. that, that's in line with the Tea Party. But I'm not a Tea Party, uh, you know, flag waver. But I do believe in some of the uh, some of the, uh, the the values, the core values. One of the great debates you mentioned it. Everyone brings it up is the fact that our commercial industrial base is not large enough. It's approximately 11% of our tax base, industrial, commercial. Industrial, commercial tends to pay its way. They don't, there aren't that many factories that have kids in school, so that they're, everyone wants to do this. Everyone wants to see that increase, this universal agreement. 
The challenge comes in order to increase that, you have to build more industrial commercial than you build houses. We still have 50,000 or more houses planted for approval. It used to be 70,000, but some of those subdivisions have uh, fallen away. How do you increase that percentage uh, from 11% up um, when there's still demand for building new houses? And the, some, the, what, the subdivisions coming along appear to have Everyone's, everyone wants to have housing as part of their complex. Housing is so profitable. How do you do that? How, how do you increase that 11% um, at a time when there's still demand for, from developers to build houses? That's what they want. Uh, I, I, I think your question is, is um, how do you build the 11% and while there's a demand for housing? I, I don't think that those are, are, those are separate issues. Um, it's very similar to a hospital, mm -hmm. very high dense or, or high density, and uh, and primary care mm -hmm. uh, or specialists. Uh, if there's a demand for residential housing and there is uh, a, a demand of residential housing in the one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollar range here in St. Johns County, um, there's not a very big demand for a five hundred or a million dollar home uh, here in St. Johns County. Um, so. And that's not just in St. John's County, that's nationwide. That's the sweet spot of, of any places that, that is turning around. Those are the valuations of the homes. Those are going to continue, um, and because that's a financial decision, at that money for the residential rate, it doesn't make sense to rent. If you qualify for a home, it makes sense to, to purchase at that level. $150,000 $100, to $200,000 home. Your question around building the 11%, in the industrial park, first of all, there's, there are quite a few industrial parks here in St. John's County. Quite a few that are um, semi-empty. Uh, quite a few that are empty altogether. Um, the the uh, you know I don't know the answer on how to fill those particular ones that are those industrial parks that are that are empty and continue that you know filling those up will actually help increase that that 11 percent but part of the 11 percent problem is it only costs you 33 dollars to do business here in St. John's County so through your business tax license so um, part of the potential of the problem is you have a company that's making a million dollars or two million dollars and they're still paying 33 dollars for the business tax license um, and uh, that's part of the count of that 11%. Uh, in terms of attracting, you know, if you attract great people to, to here, industrial will, co will come, industry will come. Uh, everyone talks about impact fees and perhaps if you reduce impact fees, maybe that will attract industry. Uh, while that certainly has a, as a person who built many buildings before, um, well, that certainly uh, has a, uh, a uh, an impact upon someone who has a small to medium sized business. It's not a large portion of their of their concern when they're looking to bring in uh, you know 200 to 300 jobs. The and that's one of the ways that we can uh, raise that 11 percent. Let's go back to 2006. Mm -hmm. You were here then, mm -hmm. and you're aware that what happened, the county commission was voted, uh, the people who were up for election were voted out, and new people were voted in. The big issue was the 70,000 homes. And people said, whoa, enough is enough, that the voters to kick them out. The other people said, hey, it's property rights, it's their right, they, they've got a right to build these houses. And finding that common middle ground in there between the people who say, hey, we don't want 70,000 more houses, we don't want the roads, the congestion, the, the packed schools, First, the other people say, hey, it's my property, it's my right, I've got a right to do it. How do you find that balance? So if you're elected to the commission, that issue is not going to go away, and it's going to come back uh, with enthusiasm when the economy uh, rebounds, which eventually it will. How do you find the middle ground there? Uh, the middle ground is, to, to, well, two things. One is financial. Uh, in fact, I, I believe that there is a proposal on the floor now with the current commission that would... Uh, Usually, when a developer builds a, uh, the roads for a development, they're finished, and after you have 51% ownership, you turn it back over to the county, the county helps maintain those roads. 
I understand now there's a proposal to actually not do that and turn that over to the homeowners association. Um, that's the wrong thing to do. That's the wrong message. Um, uh, how many potholes will you have in the neighborhood? How, how will that affect uh, values? And again, those roads, I consider that infrastructure. And that's something that the county should always, always do. The balance, so that's a financial, that one in particular is a financial. You, you can't figure out, I can't maintain the, that 700 home neighborhood if I can't financially handle the repaving and the maintenance on that. If I can't send a fire truck out there, what's the response time for a fire truck? Those are financial uh, things that need to be taken into consideration. Perhaps they weren't taken into consideration before. But there is a balance. That particular issue is, is, is finance. Okay. I got, I got two or three, uh, Bill. You said early in your presentation that you are an advocate of controlled growth. Could, could you expand on that? What do you mean by, since we were just talking about this industrial, residential thing, what is controlled growth in St. Johns County from your perspective? Uh, it's the exact same in, um, the, in business as it, as it should be in the county. For example, in business, the person who builds a big building, Taj Mahal, they get all their people employed, they get the phone right there, and they wait for the phone to ring to sell that widget. Many of those, 86% of those, fail. Um, and uh, controlled growth would be an example for the county is, you know, permitting anything as it comes through to, so that we have a, an imbalance of supply and demand. Whether that is residential, so we have too many homes on the market, uh, I mentioned earlier, right now we have a demand for the $100,000 to the $250,000 homes. We still have a lot of inventory in the area of foreclosures that have yet to be released uh, and that'll, that'll impact it. Um, but controlled growth uh, means perhaps you should have industry, density, and then you have residential. Schools are what a great way to attract people here to St. John's County. The schools, mm -hmm. number one, people want to come here for the school. They want to live here. So they do want, the folks that do, do want to live here, um, but we can't automatically assume that we're going to have two million people wanting to rush into St. John's County and therefore we should go ahead and permit all of these different uh, neighborhoods and subdivisions. Um, so there's a balance because that hurts the property tax that hurts another person on the other side of the county. That hurts something. If, if, a, if a project fails, that hurts everyone. And uh, not just the folks in that particular neighborhood. Hmm. Do I hear you advocating more of a plan unit development approach to the county or because we talk about schools and business and residential? Control, that's correct. Right. Uh, rather than, uh, uh, rather than uh, Let's throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. All right. You mentioned um, this flow of money that comes in from Orlando or those people coming here and then it goes north to Jacksonville. And you said, we've got to keep the money here and not let it go there. How do we do that? How's your, what's your plan to do that? Uh, first plan is to show that the county is a lead by example, which means that any work that we have to do here in the county will come from the folks who are here in the county. Many people talk about national unemployment rates. Mm -hmm. Many people don't realize that they changed the way that they actually count that. Um, so they no longer count the person who stopped going to the line and asking for unemployment. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing here in St. John's County. Uh, I believe we have a lot of uh, bit former business people, electricians, plumbers, laborers, carpenters, framers. We had a boom. We have a lot of people who are unemployed. Let's try to get those to work, to, back to work and lead by example through the county to make sure that we can put those folks to work, not on the county payroll, but on a project by project basis, whether it's capital improvements uh, or a maintenance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and then in terms of, of uh, 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 I plan to uh, have a what's called a business innovation hub. Uh, if you think back to 
uh, the year 2000 uh, in the incubator model. We have a lot of folks here in St. John's County that are smart, bright, and their business could flourish and take and take off if they could share ideas, perhaps share office space, perhaps share a telephone system, share a copy machine, all within a business innovation hub, this incubator model. If that, if that St. John's County business resident, mother, father, whatever it is, uh, can grow from one or two employees to four or five employees, we've now doubled and that should be our focus. All many times we talk about this IDA, the Industrial Development Authority. And, and, and I have talked to a thousand people and out of a thousand people, I've had one who said, I know what that is. And their answer was, that is a way for the bigger business in St. John's County to expand their business and import highly skilled jobs into the area. Interesting. Interesting. That was the one person. Uh, so what I'm talking about doing is mass communication for the normal business person. Expanding that one or two person shop to four or five through the business in incubation or in business innovation hub mm -hmm. uh, model. And that's... Okay. Mm -hmm. My last question is, so why did, why did what prompted you to do this, <laughs> to run for this that's, office? That's a great uh, question. Um, I think uh, during my uh, introduction, I told you that I was the son of a man who worked for the President mm -hmm. of the United States. I've worked for two senators in the state of Florida, uh, and then Governor Bob Graham. I sat on the uh, Education Committee and was part of the first MBA class at Florida's 11th uh, uh, university, Florida Gulf Coast uh, University. Um, I've been participating in politics all my life, participating as a community volunteer, whether it's through the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the, the American Cancer Society. I was president of the uh, American Cancer Society, at, I think at age 19, for their Great American Smokeout. Um, and uh, this to me is, it's now time I uh, like I said, I've been here since 2004. It, it, it wasn't a question of if I was going to run. It was a question of when. I want to do a follow-up question. What wrong? Oh no! What? what, what no, sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not. We're not standing. You're we're fine. Not nailing you to the wall. You're fine. <laughs> um, he asked the, the uh, uh, question, you know, about doing business in the county, you acknowledge that maybe the best contract is not with the lowest price, but with the local. It's sort of like tariffs. If we have tariffs and something coming in from some other country, the result of that is we raise the price because we lower the competition. So if we restrict it to say in county employee uh, companies, there are fewer of them, it's going to raise the price. Um, so that's in essence an advocate for higher taxes, is it not? No, uh, no. It's it's just a way to show financially, if you look at it black and white, that a person that may be two percent higher on a mm -hmm. uh, request for a proposal bid, who may be local, who may have ten or twelve employees that live here in the county, oh, when you really net the net effect of where they're going to take that money and spend it in the county and spend it on the sales the sales tax the net effect may actually be lower. Now, I'm not talking about the folks that are, you're, you're assuming that you have a million dollar proposal against a two million dollar proposal, that financially may not make sense. In those cases, that's where the partnering comes in. So I'm not saying that it's mandated that you do business with someone, uh, uh, you know, your first priority, but maybe a point system, uh, maybe a, an encouragement to uh, how many local, okay, you come from Miami to pave our roads or build a bridge for us, uh, how many local people are you, do you plan to employ may be a question that should be asked during the RFP process that's not. But you know, that when they had the, the um, uh, 10, 15 years ago, the big thing, emphasis in minority and 
female owned companies. All of a sudden there are all these companies with the sister or the brother. Um, uh, uh, all of a sudden became the CEO of the company and they weren't really the person that was just rampant uh, uh, misuse of the system. Doesn't this open the door for that? Uh, not in fear. We, we have the perfect regulation here mm -hmm. in St. John's County. It's mm -hmm. called the business tax license. Mm -hmm. So if a business tax license just got open three weeks ago mm -hmm. and you're now uh, promoting that, we may discount that as you being a local business. Okay, so if I know that this is happening, my company is in Duval, I'm going to open a business here right now. And maybe, maybe it doesn't help me for the next year, but maybe two, three, four, five years down the road, it does help me, even though uh, I'm based in Duval, but my company is based here. I mean, it seems to me that there'd be main ways to get around that. Well, what, some of the questions, you're right, but some of the questions during the RFP process would be how many people live here in mm -hmm. St. John's County? How many people say, how many people are you going to employ who are residents of St. John's County? Uh, those are the types of questions and, and you know if somebody from Duval, Duval Asphalt, whoever wants to come in and pave the roads uh, and they say look nobody lives here I hire temporary workers and there I hear from Miami ship them in from Miami but that's the way that I want to do my business and you're not going to tell me who to hire that's fine and, and that's every business owner's prerogative uh, of doing that business but I'm suggesting maybe we have a point system where that may be a uh, less valued answer than someone who had, who will come in and hire 10 to 12 people who live here in St. John's County. Okay, thank you. All right. I have one more. You mentioned... Uh, Did you take your three? Yep. Okay. I, I, I have four. He's the boss. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. You, you talked about expanding services where the county could make additional money, and, I, and I'd like for you to talk a little more about that. Talk about utilities, power, voice, data services, but in reality the county's not in that business other than maybe water filtration. Right. So how do you do that and how will that, how is that going to happen without it actually, uh, and, and, if, and if the county has a hand in this, is it not a use tax, is it not, I guess I don't understand how you would structure that, if that makes sense. Uh, well, first of all, it would be a service offering. So we're in the business, we would be in the business of, you could have Bell South or at and t You'd be a reseller? Or you could, have, you could be, a, that's called a local exchange carrier for, for at and t Sure, you could potentially be that. That's with the, in the use of the, the telephone, that's uh, mm -hmm. the, on the telephone sure. example. Um, in the terms of voice and data, uh, you have lots of choices. So you could have Comcast, you could have any of the other folks that, that want to bring you with AT&T as an example uh, to come in. Um, but it's, an, it's, a, it's not a mandate, it's an offering. And that is, now in terms of, so, so that's a, not a tax in terms of you must use this. Uh, uh, it's an offering. If you, I, I envision a day that we could be more sufficient upon all these uh, infrastructure, as I call them, these infrastructure, such as utilities, yeah. uh, electric, data, voice, data, whatever it is. These are infra infrastructure, whether you need it for your resident and business, by the way. This, is ev this affects every person in St. John's County. That's why I call it infrastructure. This is not, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a necessity. So let's give them a choice, and if they, if they want to choose us, well, they should choose us. How do we do that? Uh, you know, currently we have a $500 million budget, we have $350 million in debt. Um, we have a lot of reserves that are already spoken for from the, the builders uh, and impact fees. We, uh, again, you live, if you live and die by the tax, then when you go down on taxes, you owe somebody money. Or a refund or credit, such as we're in, the, in, the, in that situation. How do you fund it? Uh, right now is a great opportunity. Money is very cheap right now. We, if we want to change, we need to change now. The types of changes that I'm talking about need to happen now to affect the folks for 2016, 2017, 2018. Uh, you can't build a utility company overnight. You can't. You can fund it, 
very quickly, but you still can't build the infrastructure. Um, the good part about that is what an opportunity do we have right now? The stars have aligned. We have cheap money and we have a lot of development that has been started but not complete. Mm -hmm. This is an invitation for service offering right now. I can't... To, the, the, the analogy is to go back after that, let's say that development or that building is up already, then we got to cut the roads and re-put it in and it costs you twice as much. So right now we have a perfect opportunity to make change if we will think global and act local. Okay. So these people would be uh, county employees? Who would? The, these people, these utilities, whatever uh, companies you come up with, would they be county employees? You can do it in two ways, either a public-private partnership or you can be county employees. Okay. You're the first candidate we've, we've uh, heard, uh, we've yes. met with so far, who said that uh, <laughs> calling for expansion of uh, government services. Right? Okay, expansion of services. I didn't say expansion of government. There's a very, and it concerns me that, that you heard that, so let me re restate the message. An expansion of services could be no expansion of government. I'll give you an analogy. I went to go and get my driver's license renewed. Mm -hmm. Man, I had never been to a county where I didn't have to wait an hour to get my driver's license or my tag renewed. I walked in, I took a number, they said have a seat right over there. Before I could have a seat, it says now serving. I got 18 windows that were, were there to help me. What a fantastic opportunity. Here you go. I was in and out of there in about 90 seconds. Was took time, more time to, I guess, let the picture dry than it did for them to help me and, and pay for it. What a great opportunity. I thought, this is fantastic. And I looked around and I said, wow, we've got 18 windows open. There's two people at the windows. So maybe some of those folks could actually help with the collection of the money for the utilities. Uh, maybe that, that maybe there's a driver out there or there's a serviceman or a maintenance person who's already on the payroll who, who could help expand those services. Okay. Does but that I, make sense? But I, I asked the question on purpose. You, I asked if there'd be more county employees. You said yes. So that's why I asked the second question. No, you asked if they would be county employees. Well, yes. That was your question. Okay. So but you're not going to get the, the fellow who t takes the money at the DMV to install uh, cable lines. They won't have the expertise. They'll have it. There, there's, their talent and training is in another area. Agreed, but that person who takes the money for your for the DMV could take your money for your electric bill. I get that. Uh, like, I'm not I'm not trying to equate somebody put that person in a truck to go deliver. Okay. I'm just saying that there. And my other was there may be a person in a truck. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a person in a truck who has the skill to dig the ditch and run the fiber optic cable who could be available. So. I don't know if there would be an expansion. Mm -hmm. I do know that either of those, the service offering would be either the current, a more efficient government, meaning that maybe the same person does more than one job, uh, or it'd be a public-private partnership. I'm sorry. No problem. I'll, I'll I, I wanted to, no, I wanted to, to make sure I clarified because I didn't, I didn't say an expansion of county employees. Okay. I said a reuse and more efficient. I just want to comment on the uh, utility idea. City of Leesburg buys bulk electricity from Florida Power and, sell, and sells it with a two or three percent increase to its residents for it. So it keeps that money. I don't know if there are any extra employees or not, but uh, I know that was one of the big examples that uh, I was amazed at. I don't think too many cities do that. There are a few. Uh, actually, there are quite a few cities, uh, not only in Florida, in the South, in Florida and Georgia. There are m every every year. There's more and more cities that are expanding their utilities. Uh, uh, one that is a little bit smaller, uh, city of Thomasville, Thomasville, Georgia, right across from Tallahassee, uh, went down this uh, same uh, road where they were dependent upon property taxes. Uh, today, there's actually no uh, property taxes because they're eight, nine years of up and running, and they're continue to, <laughs> to decrease their taxes. Um, the question was, uh, what other, I mean, Administrator Wanchek has cut since she's been here. 
cut many jobs out. Any places you see that need more cutting, or is there uh, is there something that you think is padded or over full of employees that you want to cut further? Uh, have you been looking at the county? Uh, I, I have been studying that budget. I know the budget uh, inside and out. I have studied it. Uh, can tell you just about where every percent of the tax dollar goes. I can tell you the difference between the general fund and, and what what the use is, is for. Um, again, there was a, there were a lot of cuts. There were a lot of voluntary cuts. Um, firefighters took a five and a quarter percent voluntary cut, and that's from a union unionized workforce. Great job, and, and that was uh, they they did a great job uh, at, at doing that. I am sure that when the economy turns around and we continue to expand our revenues, that they're going to want to be recompensated and as they should, uh, the economy uh, uh, contracts. In terms of specifically, uh, no areas that I have seen in uh, additional cuts, I would tell you that the, the job of a county commissioner is to set policy, not to follow policy that has been written just because it's always been done that way. The job of the county manager, county administrator, and their staff is to follow that direction, not the other way around. I see. And uh, while... Do you think that's happening? Uh, I, I, I can... I have been... Uh, several people have, have given me their opinions uh, that uh, that is the that uh, you know whatever the county administration comes up with is the recommendation and that's a blanket approval for the current county administration. I would say that uh, I'm not in I'm not the person to not question and look at every single opportunity and just say a yes. Uh, so you're saying in essence that the present. Um, County Commission is a rubber stamp. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I'm saying that the some of the opinions uh, throughout my campaign, mm -hmm. uh, some of the opinions of some of the folks, the St. Johns County residents, um, who are they have that mindset that the current County Commission is a um, uh, not a rubber stamp, but and they, they do ask questions, but uh, the current County Administration and the budget process and the this is where we can save. The money on this by cutting this service or cutting here or cutting there, the recommendation then comes there, and uh, there's no further you know discussion. Uh, I'm simply saying that I'm not the person to ru to rubber stamp. Have you uh, seen county commission in action? Yes, have you attended the meetings, and do you get this? You're saying other people have told you this. Yes, I'd like to know what your impression is being in the room and observing. I have absolutely been in the room and observed. Um, uh, at a county commission meeting, a recent county commission meeting, about five hours was spent on whether or not a business in the county was playing their music too loud. I think I sat there for five hours listening to that issue. Yeah. Um, at a county commission meeting, we should set policy and certainly listen to the voice of our constituents so that we can turn around and reset that policy if it needs to be changed or if it's working uh, correct. But the county commissioner shouldn't be in the position of enforcement. And all too often I have seen the last few times that you're putting a county commissioner, a highly paid county commissioner, in the job of making a decision whether or not uh, someone's playing music too loud or uh, you know whether this has been violated or not uh, I, I, I don't understand that um, that's the equivalent to you coming to me as the CEO 
of this newspaper and telling me that you don't have, um, you know, there's no soap left in the dispenser. Um, not that I, I, I do. So you don't right. think that, uh, you don't think the county commission should be the final arbiter like that, you know, code enforcement issues and when the zoning, uh, certain zoning things get turned down at the zoning board, they appeal. So you think that's a, I, a, a role for the county commission or not? I agree, I agree in the appeals process, but if the zone is, if the zoning is incorrect and it, the zoning itself needs to be changed for that, whether it's that area or that one single plot, mm -hmm. then that needs to be taken into consideration, not whether or not the enforcement is happening. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Now let me ask you one other question. You're talking about uh, the tax space. What businesses is St. John's County not attracting that it should be attracting to build that commercial tax base? Great question, Margo. I, I, I can appreciate that. Um, I hear that there are several new companies and, and through attending the commission meeting, I hear the positive every time of how we have this company coming in town with 14 employees and this company coming in town with potentially 200 employees um, out by the, um, out off of 16. Uh, these are great. What we don't need is uh, a company coming in town, in town um, shipping in highly specialized jobs without a cohesive and concurrent education for the current folks. To, um, uh, to learn those jobs. A simple way to saying it is there is a service. Every, a, a lot of people are in the service industry. We have tourism here. Everyone knows St. Augustine. Everyone knows St. Augustine. Lots of tourists here. So there's a lot of service industry here. There's still a lot of those folks out of work who were waitresses and bartenders and cooks and chefs and dishwashers. Uh, the types of, of businesses that we should attract should be all all of the above but in the case where the highly specialized worker would come into here mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we have concurrent education so that not every job is shipped in so you're advocating we continue the lower job wage service industry type jobs because that's something the county has said they've wanted to get away from they wanted to get more into the high tech. They've spent a lot of money with the chamber on target industry studies. Mm -hmm. So I'm just based on your business background, what should it be other than the kinds of service industry that we see right now? Other than service industry should be yeah. uh, software. Uh, in my background, software, healthcare, those are jobs, two types of areas where they can be, folks can be trained very mm -hmm. easily uh, and they become a specialized workforce here within the county. So love the health, attracting more healthcare, uh, uh, love attracting more software, um, and uh, those are just two types of industries. Um, you know, a, a like software development. Software development, correct, companies. correct, correct. Very similar to, and, and it can be anything. It could be, uh, we have a company here in St. John's County that is uh, one of the greatest business models uh, that makes uh, alternative um, energy plants uh, here in St. John's County. What a great opportunity, but do you know that when I sit with that owner, where he's shipping his alternative energy plant, shipping them outside of St. John's County. And then I drive down the street and I see a building um, that's being built and they have no idea, you know, they, they, they just, you know, those, those folks, that, that would happen through the Business Innovation Hub. Um, the, the types of industry would, would continue to expand because as people sit around the, the innovation hub, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do? Oh great, we do this, well maybe we could partner on a project. That's the, the, an environment that we need, is that fostering of that partnership. Um, but, but getting back to the core was remember focusing on those employers who are currently here, who may have one, two, three, four, five employees, to get to 10 employees, we've now doubled their business.
in terms of for us. You get to close it out. Uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity to, to speak to you. Um, I am sure that um, many of my uh, ideas and um, energy in this, in this uh, campaign, during this campaign, uh, are going to be first, or the, perhaps the only thing that you're hearing from, uh, from candidates. Um, uh, I'm looking to make a change. I can't do it overnight. I can't do it alone. I'm asking for your endorsement. Um, if you believe in the things that I believe in, the direction that I'd like to set this county uh, in, then I'd love to have your endorsement and, uh, and we'll, we'll go from there. But we can't do it um, if we don't make change. And uh, remember, progress doesn't happen unless we make change. And I vote for Bill McClure, and that's a vote for progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Bill.